Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. This is Elsie Valentine. Wait on the Lord. I want to start with Isaiah 40, 31. It says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What does it mean to wait on the Lord? Well, waiting on God helps us focus on the purpose and direction for our life according to God's will. To be still before God and wait on his instructions to guide us into a path he has ordained and designed for us. In the story of Moses in Exodus chapter 14, when they were getting ready to cross the Red Sea, Moses was faced with a big challenge. He had all the congregation of the Israelites there and they became weary. They became very stressed. They became very anxious because Pharaoh and his men were after them. They wanted Moses to hurry up and do something. They begin to say to Moses, you know, why did you bring us out of Egypt? They were fine where they were at. They loved being slaves. They loved being bound. And that's where they wanted to go back to. But Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. If Moses would have rushed God's timing and listened to the people rather than hear God, he would have not heard God. And he told the people, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Because Moses listened to the Lord, the Lord gave them the victory that day. He lifted up his rod and stretched out his hand and the sea was divided and the children were able to move into dry ground in the midst of the sea. And we know what happens afterwards. The Lord gave them the victory. They were able to overcome Pharaoh and his men. They were able to cross over. The angel of the Lord went before them. He moved through them and behind them. He was the pillar of cloud that was with them in the day and the fire that went with them at night. They got to experience something great while they were in the desert. They got to experience the Shekinah glory of the living God. And if Moses would not have been still and listened to the voice of the Lord, they would have never made it out of Egypt. We give God thanks for those who hear the voice of the Lord and wait upon him. The next verse here in Isaiah 40, 31 says, they shall renew their strength. When your strength is renewed, you're receiving power from the Lord. He increases might upon you. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. When I think of a person in the Bible whose strength was renewed, I think about Samson. Samson has a very interesting story. He was a man who was brought into a family of Nazarites. His mother had a pact with the Lord. She was not to allow any razors to come upon his head, nor was he allowed to drink wine or eat unclean food. But as time went by, Samson made his own choices and he fell for Delilah who deceived him and told him lies in order to find out where does his strength lies. And we all know the story, what happens to Samson. But one of the most interesting things about Samson is that when his eyes were taken out, he had no vision when his hair was completely cut off and he had no power. He asked the Lord, to give him one more chance to allow his hands to touch those pillars so that he may be able to defeat his enemies. And the Lord renewed his strength and the Lord answered him in that moment and gave him his heart's desire to be able to conquer the enemy, even though he did die. But he was a man who needed his strength renewed. There are times that we need our strength renewed. There are times we fail 
and we ask God to forgive us for our sins. We all fall short of his glory. It's not how you stay down, but it's how you pick yourself back up. It's how you receive that new strength in order to continue pressing on and moving forward. The next verse is, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. And this one is so beautiful. I thought of Gideon. You know, Gideon was facing uh, demonic attacks against his people, against their their harvests. They were in a place where there was nothing but altars that were built to Baals. You know, these fake gods, they mean nothing. They were surrounded by the Midianites and the Amalekites. You know, they were tired of their enemy always coming in and taking and taking and taking from them. And then one day, this man Gideon, who was a bit intimidated as well by his enemies, because the story of him when he goes within with his 300 men, we know that the Lord began to cut down his army and show him that at times you don't need a large army to go with you in order to win a battle. You know, sometimes you just need to have your sword, which is your word. And you just got to go into that room and you got to fight, whether it's on your knees, whether it's prostrated on your face, but you got to fight so that you can mount up on wings like eagles. And what do eagles do? They fly. They soar high. You don't want to be like a chicken because a chicken can't fly. <laughs> they can't fly, but they sure do taste good. They cannot soar high. They're not like eagles. Eagles look down. They see their prey. They see their enemy or whatever it is. And they come down and they grab what's theirs. The eagle is such an intriguing animal as well because the mother watches her babies from a nest from afar. So if one of them falls out, she just comes down and she scoops up their baby and put it back in the nest. That's what eagles do. That's why you want to be like an eagle and fly. Hallelujah. The next one is they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. These two verses go together. When you look at these two verses, you think about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The pain that he endured when he was walking to the cross, the physical pain he went through, a pain of tormenting, mocking, humiliation, beaten, whipped, spit on. At his weakest moments, as he walked that road to Calvary, bearing our sins upon the cross, he didn't faint. He didn't become weary. He didn't give up. Yet the Lord did send a man to help him carry the cross. God always sends help. Even though he was afflicted, even though he was bruised and crushed for our iniquities, our sins upon the cross. Jesus didn't give up because those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up of wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases their strength. And that's what verse 29 says. It says that he gives us power. Jesus, even in his weakest moments, he still showed how much power he had within him. He didn't give up and neither shall we. We have to learn how to be still and know that he is God. We have to understand that when we wait upon the Lord and we don't push God to give us an answer for a situation that we're going through, he's going to guide us and lead us into a path. It will be a crooked path, but he will make that crooked path narrow path straight for us as long as we wait on him and we hear his voice and listen to his directions Moses waited on the Lord and the Lord with one voice of his command allow those red seas to part so that his children can walk through the children of Israel Gideon he waited upon the Lord Samson he waited and his strength was renewed 
God did this with them. He will do it with you. We must wait on him. Wait on his timing. And he will increase might, power, and strength upon us to overcome every obstacle that we are facing. There's nothing too big nor small that God cannot handle. And just remember this. Whenever you're going through something and you want God to hurry up, hurry up so you can overcome the situation and fly high. Remember, wait on him so that you can soar up high on wings of eagles and be like an eagle and not like a chicken that can't fly. God bless you. Have a wonderful spirit filled day. Amen.